All right, let's take a look at our first practice problem associated with sample problem A here in chapter four. Uh, this problem is going to have two parts. Uh, the setup is a little bit long. I mean, reading the question is a little bit long, but uh, we're actually not going to be drawing very much. So number one, after a skydiver jumps from a plane, the only force initially acting on the diver is Earth's gravitational attraction. After about 10 seconds of falling, air resistance increased so that its magnitude on the diver is now in magnitude to Earth's gravitational force on the diver. At this time, a diver in a B-down position will be falling at a constant speed of about 190 kilometers per hour. So uh, we're going to need to go back and mine that a uh, bit of writing for some information. Uh, we'll do that in just a moment. Part A, draw a free body diagram of the skydiver when the diver initially leaves the plane, initially. And the reason that is important is because in the problem, it told us that the only force initially acting on the diver is Earth's gravitational attraction. We can represent that with F sub G, easy enough. So uh, when we talk about the diver initially leaving the plane, we're ta only talking about F sub G. So let's uh, let's draw our diver. Okay, make sure he's wearing a helmet. Want to be safe. Uh, draw a couple arms. There we go. And so we're going to need to identify the center of mass because in free body diagrams, we're at the least level. We're assuming that. Uh, forces are operating only on the center of mass. Just makes uh, learning the concepts a little bit easier. And again, we're told by the question that the only force initially acting on the diver is Earth's gravitational force. So when we're talking about the diver initially leaving the plane, we only have one arrow here because we only have one force, and it is the force of gravity, so F sub G. Okay, so that's A, and that's all we know. Part B. Draw a free body diagram of the skydiver at the 10th second of free falling. Now you might be freaking out. What's so special about the 10th second? Am I supposed to know something about skydiving? What's going on here? No, that's, that's not what we're saying here. In back, back in the question, after about 10 seconds of falling, air resistance on the diver will have increased. Okay, it was zero, right? There, there's, no, there's, there's no air resistance to start here. because You just left the plane. So air resistance will have increased so that its magnitude on the diver is now equal to the magnitude of Earth's gravitational force. That means however big this F sub G is, uh, the force due to air resistance is going to be just as big, right? Equal in magnitude. doesn't mean equal in direction, okay? It's, that's not true, but it's equal in magnitude only. So... Uh, the force of gravity is still acting on it. Actually, let's draw our diver again. I know you guys want to see me draw this again. Make sure you got your helmet. Be safe. It's a very lifelike arms. It's basically replica legs. And draw our center of mass. And we still have that force of gravity is operating down but now we have again after 10 seconds and again i'm getting this from the question not just memorizing this after about 10 seconds there's going to be a force of air right air resistance that's equal in magnitude but obviously opposite in direction from the force due to gravity now how do i how do i represent that how do i represent that they're equal in magnitude I simply draw these arrows, these vector arrows, so that they are the same length. That's it, okay? That's how we represent that in our free body diagrams. 